I'll put a full list of the prerequisites in the link below the video. But before we start, we need to make sure that our server is indeed running Windows Server 2025, just to prove it's not all smoke and mirrors. 2025 data center. And we need to make sure that our Windows machine is fully up to date, which it is. And before it can be a domain controller, it's got to be a member server of the domain. So let's just check we're in the domain. And there we are, we are a domain member. So we need to add on the role for Active Directory to main services. So from server, server manager, manage add remove roles. And we want Active Directory to main services. Click the additional features, click next. Then click all the way through. Doesn't actually need to restart the server, but as a false habit, I usually tick the box. You do need to restart the server when you're promoted to a domain controller, but not for adding the role. For the sake of the video, this next bit's been sped up quite considerably. But that's everything added role wise. So we're now in a position where we can promote this server to be a domain controller. Now it will automatically try and add itself to the domain it is a member of. We're adding it as the domain administrator. Click next. And we do want it to be a global catalog server. And we need to specify the domain services restore mode password. Next. If you wonder what that means, go on my website and search it. I've already written an article about that. From any domain controller. There's only one other domain controller on the test network here, so. Next. And what we want is all prerequisites checked, passed successfully. Click install to begin. And once again, for the sake of the video, I've sped this up quite considerably. When it is finished, it will reboot the server for you. So now on the rebooted server, if I log back in, if I go to A to users and computers and expand domain controllers, you'll see I've now got two. The second one being my 2025 server. So if I just go to properties, operating system, you can see that it is indeed Windows Server 2025. So that, that is now our domain controller. Now what I like to do post promotion is just take a look to see what's going on with the DNS on the network cards. Because, yeah, what it has a habit of doing is taking the settings that it had before it was a domain controller and just dropping the loopback address in under its DNS which it has done. You see, it's put that down as a second option there. Now, I'm sure people are going to email me and complain that I'm incorrect, but I prefer to have domain controllers look to themselves first and then look to another domain controller, preferably in the same site as a secondary, which I, I, did, I absolutely do want in this scenario because I've only got two domain controllers and I'm about to remove the other one. So, bear in mind this has just been promoted. So if you go into AD uh, Sites and Services, what you'll probably find is you'll see the servers are listed like this. And if you expand them out, you'll see the NTDS settings. But when you select them, there's nothing over on the right-hand side. And that's completely normal because I've just added a new domain control. Obviously, you've got multiple domain controls. Some of them may exist. But it takes a while for the KDC service to go around and uh, work out. So... I'm going to leave it a couple of hours and I'll come back and go to the same place. Just make sure that 
everything is replicating correctly. Now you'll see when I expand these that they've automatically generated the replication links between them. You just need to wait a few minutes for that. I'll play the cup of coffee roll. Uh, now I'm going to take out my old domain controller, so I want to make sure that my... Uh, I've only got one site you can see there with two servers in it. You may have multiple sites with multiple servers in, in a production network. So you'll need to go through each one of them and, and do a false replication and just make sure everything replicates cleanly before taking domain controllers out of the equation. Look in the event logs of all the domain controllers. Make sure everything's replicating nice and the domain is happy. Now I'm going to jump across over onto my legacy domain controller. Now, I'm just going to query as to where my first model rolls are. Now I know where they will be because I've only got one domain controller and they're all on the 2019 server. So in production, these may be spread about over multiple servers, but essentially because I'm about to retire uh, LAN 29 in the domain controller, any first model rolls that are on there, I'm going to need to move. So I'm going to need to move all of them in this case. So jump back across onto my new domain controller and open a PowerShell window. Now because I'm exceptionally lazy, if you go to PNET Live Article 1257, the command that you need to move all the rules is on the on the page there, so you can just copy and paste it. There's the command that I used earlier to find out where the physical roles are. But I'm too lazy to type that command out in its entirety, so I'm just going to copy and paste it off my website. Paste it in there, and now what I am going to need to do is change the name of the server name that I want to move them to, because this server has a different name, obviously. So now if I execute this command, it should move all the physical rules onto this new server. I just select A to do them all, otherwise it will ask you for each, each of them. So if I run a netdom query physmo on here, it should say that all the rules are now on my 2025 server. And they are smashing. That's exactly what we want. More importantly, they're not on the 2019 server, which we're about to retire as the domain controller. Now you'll remember I was pretty adamant about what to do with um, DNS settings on the new domain controller. Well, the old one, what you'll find is if you suddenly demote it and it's only looking at itself as a domain controller, then when you go to log on afterwards, it'll say there are no log on servers available because if you're looking here it's only set to look at itself which is fine I'm going to so I'm going to set this one the opposite way around I'm going to set it to look at itself as a secondary server and I'm going to look at the new 2025 domain controller as its primary just so that when I take this when I take the domain rolls off this it can still log on it can still resolve domain names because as part of the demotion and removal of the services, it will take DNS away from this server. So this is exactly the opposite of what we were doing before, but it won't let us remove this role, and you'll see why in a minute. Because it's a domain controller, so we need to demote it, which is what this is telling us. So we're going to select the option to demote this domain controller. Now I'm not going to tick the box for false removal because I want it to gracefully be demoted. Next. Proceed with removal. Yeah, my new server is a global cat in the DNS. Tick the box. Click next. Yeah. Now I'm going to need to set the local administrator password, because obviously the local administrator password on a domain controller is the domain admin password. So once it's out of the domain, it'll need its local AD password back. 
and when it's finished it will reboot the machine Now remember I can still log into it with a domain account because even though it's not a domain controller it is still a member of the domain. The last thing I need to do is to remove. See it's asking us to promote it because it knows the rules there and it's not a domain controller. So I need to remove the role. Remember last time I went to remove the rule, it errored and told me to demote it. This time it won't, it'll let us remove the rule. And it'll have a think about it for a couple of minutes. There we go. Once again, I've sped this up for the sake of the video, and it's telling us it wants a restart. So let's just manually restart that server, and then I'm just going to log back on with my domain account. And my final job, assuming that we're going to retire this server, of course, is to remove it gracefully from the domain. Which is reasonably straightforward to do. Go to setting system about System info, and you can see it's a member server at the minute, so we're going to change, change, we're just going to put this in a work group so it's no longer in the domain. And we're, if it's a physical server, we can either turn it off and decommission it and take it out of the rack. If it's a virtual machine, we can remove it from in the inventory. Because we take that out of the domain, it's going to want to reboot. Let it do so just to make sure that it comes out gracefully. And then when it comes back up, we can simply shut the server down. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell. Shut that down, and we've successfully replaced our 2019 domain controller with the server 2025 domain controller. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to come and see us www.petnetwide.com.